Hi everyone, my name is Benjamin Duro. I'm a geologist working at ELIS. So today I'm going to talk about our brand new module developed in Palos Can 2017. So this module is about the cross plot. So the idea with the cross plot is to blend different objects to obtain a cross plot. And once we have this cross plot, we can then generate volumes or geobodies. So in this interface, actually, uh, the idea is to blend some objects. So as objects, we can blend volumes, horizons, arbitrary lines, and horizon stacks. And once we blend the subjects, we can then create the cross plot. So we can blend two objects or three objects depending on our needs. And once we have the cross plot, we can then, like I said, extract geobodies or volumes. So here we are looking at the interface. So this is this is a two-channel interface and we are playing with the volumes right now. So you can see that in the first dropping area we did use our seismic and in the second dropping area we did use a geomodel attribute which is called scening. Here in this area here you can see that this is a blending area. So here we can have a look at the blending between the seismic and the thinning. And if you want to have access to the seismic you can just take this color here go up and if you want to display more on the thinning we just need to take the scroller and go down here. So here we just display the seismic but if you want we can have access to real-time attributes. So if we want to have access to those attributes instead of no filter in here we can just click on this um, bar here then we're gonna have access to a drop-down menu and we can choose amongst several attributes. So this interface here is a 2D interface, but if you want, we can put this 2D interface into the 3D viewer, so we have a high interactivity between all the viewers. So here, like I said, we are playing with the volumes, but we can also create a cross plot with arbitrary lines and surfaces. So by surfaces, I mean horizons and horizon stacks. So let's have a look inside Paloscan. So because this is a brand new volume, we have to go in the module cross plot, which is down the list here. So you can see that based on the core application, we're going to have access to the four first icons. So we have four icons because we can blend four objects. So volumes, arbitrary lines, horizon stacks, and horizons. So this is based on the two channel, okay, with the core application. If you want to have access to the three channel blending, this is part of an add on module, which is based on the sequence stratigraphic analysis license. So if we click on advanced interpretation, then it will grant us the access to the three channel uh, blending. So here for the demo, let's play with the two channel volumes. So I just have to click once on this one here. Then I just enlarge this window. And in these dropping areas here, I just need to drag and drop the volume. So let's play with the seismic. So I select the seismic in here. So then if I want, I can choose another attributes. But here, because I want to play with the real-time attributes, let's drop again the time seismic. So if I zoom in, you can see that the three viewers here are linked. If I zoom out or zoom in, they move the same way. Then in here on the seismic, instead of displaying the seismic, I want to display a real-time attribute. So I can just click on no filter here. And then I'm going to have a list of attributes. So amongst those attributes here. Let's play with the RMS amplitude. So I just click once on this one here. And this blending viewer here will be updated. So if I want to display more the seismic, I can just take the scroller here, go up, but I can display more the seismic. And if I want to display more the RMS amplitude, I just have to go down here and Palos can will display more the seismic. So this is interactive and everything is updated on the fly. Okay, so let's go back to 50%. So then once we have selected the two volumes or the two objects to blend, we have to update the cross plot. We have to generate the cross plot. So we just have to click on this icon here, update cross plot. And this is the cross plot that Palo Scan is going to generate. So this cross plot here basically is going to be generated based on this volume here. So Palo Scan will take the entire volume to generate the cross plots. But if you don't want to use the entire volume and if you want to focus on a specific area, you can do so. You can use horizons, geobodies, you can use some samplings if you want, or you can use horizon stacks and volumes. So then 
once you have the cross plots and the volumes, basically the first step, like I said, the aim of this tool is to generate the geobodies. So we know that we have some geobodies around here. So the first step, once I have everything like this, is to highlight the signature of this geobody here in a cross plot. So to do so, we have several ways. So you can use different selection mouse mode. So here we have access to the ellipse selection mouse mode, rectangle selection mouse mode, polyline, or a brush. For instance, if I want to use the elli ellipse mouse mode, I can just click once on this one here. Then I can just draw my ellipse. And if I want to see the result, I just have to click on show. And Palo Scan will show me the remarkable signature of this geobody here inside the cross plots. So I can generate another one. For instance, if I want to use the rectangle one, I just click once on it. I just draw my rectangle and if I click on show you can set now I have more red dots because in this cross plot here I am highlighting the data within this square here so here I don't want to use those two ones so let's get rid of them so I just have to click on this icon here clear selection then here for this demo let's say I want to use the brush so I just click once on brush then I zoom in here and I can just brush again my job like this. So if I click on show now, again, Palo Scan will show me what I have just selected as a brush. So once I know the remarkable signature of this job body, the next step will be to create the classes. So to click the classes, I just have to click on a single blue arrow here. And in this interface here again, I have some selection mouse mode. But here, instead of selecting the objects on the seismic, I will do it in a cross plot. So let's play with the ellipse again. So I can just draw my ellipse. So the only issue I have here is that the first time I draw the ellipse, I cannot really orientate it or I cannot change the shape of it. But if I want to do so, I just have to click on this icon here, Object Editing, or I can press the keyboard shortcut E. So I click once on it, and if I double click on the object, I can then modify the shape of it or orientate it. Okay? And so if you look at the seismic in here, when I change the shape of it, the selected data changes. Okay? Because everything is updated on the fly. Like this. So for instance, here I am using this ellipse, but if I want I can draw a rectangle again, so if I draw my rectangle like this, I can then change its shape again. So you can see that the selected data here is related to the class. So the blue data which is selected here is related to this ellipse here, the blue one here, and the pink selected area or data is related to this rectangle here. So let's say, for instance, here I have the two classes, like this. If I want, I can name those classes. So if I want to name the class one here, so I select this class here, click on the AE icon here, and then I can just call it Bright Spot 1, for instance, like this. I can rename the other one, so click once here, click on the same icon, Bright Spot 2. Okay, so now I have two classes. If I want to change the order, I can just select this one and put it up if I want, or down. It will change actually the area of highlighting. If I want to highlight more the, number the pink one, I just take it here and put it up to make it front here. If I want, I can also merge the two classes. So if I select this one here and this one here, click on this icon here called Merge, I will merge the two classes like this. Because this merged class here has been merged, if I want, if I am not happy with this one, I can select it and split it back. Okay? So here, because when they were merged, I was quite happy with the selected areas, I will just merge them back and I will rename it. So I can just call it bright test, for instance. 
like this, okay? So once we have designed our classes, we are quite happy with what Paloscan is going to extract. We can then jump to the next step. So once again, we have to click on the blue arrow here and we have two options. We can either create volume. So if we click on this icon, actually, Paloscan is going to generate a volume. So where we don't have highlighted areas, we are going to have zero, we are going to have no value, so blank areas. And where we have the yellow data here, Paloscan will put the seismic behind it. I won't do it right now because this is not the aim of this demo. So the next step, uh, like I said, will be to generate the job bodies. The thing is, if I click on create job bodies, Paloscan is going to extract the entire set of job bodies. Here, I don't want this one here, for instance, and I don't want that one here. So the next step will be to bound to generate an area of extraction. To do so, again, I can use horizons. I can use a pre-existing job body. I can use an horizon stacks. So if I want to bound between two horizons, it's almost the same as this one. Or I can use the volume. So here, because I want this specific area here, let's use the volume one. So if you have a volume, you can drop it. If you don't have one, you can custom your box. So if you enable this option here, you will have access to nine yellow dots, white dots, sorry. So if you just take them, you can modify the shape of your area of extraction, like this. So let's say I'm gonna take those two ones, like this. So once you have designed the area of extraction, you can then click on create job body. Once you do this, Pelosian is going to ask you, do you want to display it? Do you want to save it? Or do you want to save and display it? Here I will select save and display it. So as a name, Paloscan, if I click on OK, Paloscan will give the name that we previously gave as a class. OK, so it's almost done. So now, because I have selected the option Save and Display, Paloscan saved the job body here in the database, but it's also Paloscan is also displaying this job body in here. So you can see that this jobody actually has been extracted all over this area here. So as a result, Paloscan extracted a lot of job bodies. Here, I just want to keep this one here, so I want to get rid of the other ones. So the idea will be to take this job body and split it. So we have a tool to do this, so we just have to go on the job body manual module. Then we have to select this body. And if you click on the minus here, Paloscan is going to display a new 3D viewer. So if I just zoom out, here are all the job bodies that Paloscan has generated. So if I play with a minimum filter size here with a minimum scroller, I will get rid of the minimum one. Okay. And if I want to get rid of the maximum one, of the biggest one, I just have to play with this one here. Okay. So this one is smaller. So I'll just take it like this. So this way I will get rid of all the job bodies that I don't want to, to keep. And I just keep the one that I am inserting in. So I click on OK. So now I have this job body. So this job body is not saved yet. So then the last step will be to select it. Click on the blue disk right here and give a name Bright Spots. Um, test. Okay. So now I have this part of the test here. And so if I want, um, we have a tool. If we have generated a lot of job bodies, we have a classification tool. So if I click on this icon here, I can then select all the job bodies, drag and drop them in here. And in here, you can see that we can have a look at the volumes of the job bodies and the surface of each of one. So if you want to change the volume unit, you can do so. If you want to use barrel, for instance, if you want to change the surface unit, you can also do it. And here is if you want to change the kind of time depth uh, relationship to calculate the, the volumes. And if you want, you can also export the table as uh, .csv or the text uh, format. 
Okay, so let's get back to the presentation. So you can see that thanks to this crossplot module, actually, uh, we are able to display a crossplot in order to extract some job bodies. So as an input, we can either use two channel or a three channel, and as object, we can use volumes, horizons, horizon stacks, and arbitrary lines. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to visit our web website or send us an email. Thank you very much for your attention.